Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of It, I am Penge and welcome back to Surviving Mars. So, a new day is dawning on Mars, it's day number seven here on Mars and this is what we've got so far, so this is our little sort of fledgling base that we have and it's not much to look at but we've got some key things in. So we've got the concrete thing to get the concrete, we've got the drone hub to look after the drones, we've got several sources of power generation, so we've got two solar panels, which is good, two wind turbine thingabobs, which are boosted by our science, which is nice, and a battery to store it all, and the battery is indeed full now. Tempted to build another battery. And we've got the little sterling generator thing as well. Now these are interesting, actually. You can open them up. If we just open it up, it generates more power. Now we don't need more power at the moment, but I'll just show you what it looks like, because it's quite funky and science fiction-y. So yeah, look. Shonk, and it opens up, and it's got purpley, wibbly stuff inside. Now my scroll wheel is still broken. I do apologize, but look, look purple wibbly stuff unfortunately it fills with sand it fills with dust if you were uh, if you leave it open and we don't need the extra power right now so let's shut the thing just to make sure it doesn't get take any damage because we don't need it open we're generating plenty of power for what we've got right now so um yeah and we've got the fuel thing there that'll fuel refinery to power up our rocket again so it's got 23 out of 60 fuel as you can see over here so that rocket will be able to take off at some point what we need now really is the important thing. We need a dome, because the domes are where people are going to live, where the earthlings are going to come and become Martians. Martianlings? No, Martians. So I think we build our first dome. So it's just here. So at the minute we have basic domes. Now I believe you can indeed research different types of domes, but the minute that's all we've got. And look how cool it is. <laughs> it's very good. So what we want to do is, now can we put it there? That would be really good. If we could put that there, because then it's near... I know it's got no cable connections. That's absolutely fine. Uh, can we rotate the dome round a little bit? Yeah, the, the positioning of the, the, that resource there is not ideal. Now, really, I'd want that there. I'd want the dome just there, where that sort of money resource thing is, where the deep, rare metal thing is. But also, we want those two sort of deposits metal deposits within range of a dome so that people can go and work them so i think we're going to have to put, maybe put the dome there possibly like that which is a little bit far away from some of our other things but that's fine it doesn't really matter so much oh another sector has been scanned so if we put that say there and then we've got access to the pipes on that side and the electricity can go in on that side as well so you can see there's a little three bits on the sort of the uh south east corner not corner the bottom right of the leg bits that are sticking out of the dome has got pipe access which is where we need to plumb in the water and the oxygen so i think if we put it there that's pretty good if we put it down here it's going to get in the way of my plans for the power generating stuff we put it down here it's nowhere near those things now we might want another dome over here at some point to make use of the natural water deposit i need to see how that works i've never i've never actually come across one of those in the few playthroughs that I did before I started this main one, I didn't come across an actual water deposit, so I don't know how they work. So I think just there, just there looks good. I, in fact, let's move it a tiny bit nearer, like that. Now, I don't want to put them too near, because I don't know how big the mine things are that sit on top of those natural resources. But there we go. Let's put a dome just there. That's very exciting. And this is a big thing. This is a big thing. Right? All the little drone things are going to come out and do some work go and grab stuff and make this and move those rocks out of the way and it should all be very awesome. Another thing I do want to do while I'm here is just put a dump site kind of thing up here. Too far from working drone commander. Oh, bother. Okay, let's put it over there then on the edge of that deposit. Just there will do because they're probably going to clear some stuff out from here maybe or from this thing and fill that up. So whatever, a little sort of waste area there. Right, so they need to build the dome, and I believe... Are we researching anything? Yes, right, we're researching one thing, the Mars crowdfunding. And look, our money is going up. Each time we research a thing, we get some more monies, because we are Europe, and that's a good thing. So, um, right, what do we want to research next? Uh, we've got a choice of extractor upgrade. Yeah, I don't want that increases power consumption by 10, and we haven't really got extractors just yet. That's to do with scientists, and then there's no one here yet. A subsurface heater... Don't need that right now. I don't know if we've got any particularly cold areas. RC transport we don't have. A hundred sol per oh uh, yeah, hundred science per sol for each RC explorer vehicle. Multiple vehicles result in collaboration losses. Now that I don't understand what that means. I don't understand. Multiple vehicles result in collaboration losses. So does that mean that we if we have more than one 
RC Explorer, it's not very good. I don't know, that's what that would imply to me. Uh, we've got this, clearing of salvage and destroyed buildings, and then we've got some stuff in, and this might be useful. New building, apartments, a residential building that houses many colonists. Now, we are going to be building a dome, and into the domes you put all sorts of fun things. So I think that is probably a very good thing to get next. Then, I think we might go for, what should we head for? Either a farm, which goes inside the domes, large in-dome building, which is more work efficient and requires no power. Now that sounds like a very good thing. So soil adaptation gives us a farm. So I think we get that as well. I think that's a good thing. And then we'll get, I think we'll get that just for the sake of it. And what I might do is, I might outsource some science, get some more science in, because none of these things, I want more buildy things, I want more exciting things to build. So if we do this, are you sure you want to outsource research to Earth? Outsource 1,000 research for 200 m in the next five souls, that's five days, or outsource 10,000 science for 2 million. I think we can afford that one. We can afford the 200 million, not the 2,000 million even, the, the numbers get very confusing. So 200 million I think we can cope with. That will still be over $4,000 million. So yeah, let's do that. And that gives us more science. So we've got 600 science now coming through, which is very good. Okay, so I think we're looking pretty good. Now one thing these guys are going to need, now we've got this in. So we've got water, which is fine. We don't have any oxygen as it stands right now. But I mean, we're not moving anyone in at the minute, so that's absolutely fine. So what we can do is, we can work on this a little bit more. So... We can get ourselves, I see the water extractor is interesting because that thing is here, but does it need to be, like if I put that slap bang on there and then connect that with pipes, does that, does that just work? Does that just sit and work? So yeah, so it requires a deposit. So we could just slap it right on top. It doesn't really matter. I'm tempted to just do that. Let's just put that there. Let's see if this works. Let's see if we can connect this up. Uh, and then we want to get the electricity cabling to come down. Oh, that is, it's beautifully in line. <laughs> it's beautifully in line. Yes. Okay. That's quite fortunate. Uh, and then we want some pipes. So the pipes can kind of come along like that, I would say. So let's have them going along all the way along there. And then down, uh, let's have them go in like this, like that. Like a nice jiggity jaggedy line, like that. Okay. So like that. So at the minute, they're not going to bother doing building any of this at the minute because they're more interested. Oh, you might. Oh, you might, my good man. Oh, you're cool. Well, I like you. You're doing some stuff. Oh, no, you're just taking rubble away. <laughs> I thought you were coming here to start working on the water for the, whatever, the rubbishy humans who need liquid sustenance. Not like you cool robot dudes. But no, you're just putting some stuff down here. That's why I put a thing here. So you don't have to drive all that way. You can just nip to this little sort of rubble area just here. But okay, fine, if you want to use that one, that's absolutely fine. So they're going to work on the dome, which is good. Now, the dome, I think, needs quite a lot of stuff. Uh, it needs a lot of metals. Polymers, I think we have 10 polymers. Yes, we've got 12 polymers. So we'll be able to build the polymer bit. Metals I can go and get from these rocks. And I don't know if we have any metals in storage. Uh, oh, we've got 30 of 30 in storage, so metals will be fine. And concrete, this thing is just going to have to build. It's just going to have to sit and churn and whir away and churn, churn and these things out, whir away and get this concrete in. So at the minute there's what, five blocks there? Oh no, there's loads of concrete just here. Absolutely, look, 109 concrete we've got just there. 109 concrete. So all these little dudes are doing now is just clearing that site down. They're just clearing the site and dropping some of the materials off inside. It looks very cool. You can go in. You can go in the domes and look, it looks really cool. But yeah, we'll see that as we get to it. So let's zoom out from there. So we're going to have another water source, which is good. Now we need to connect that up. Now it was here where they connected up, wasn't it? So we need to connect that up via some pipes, which is splendid. Now, this might need redoing later on when I work out exactly what how big the mine things are that goes on there. But for now, let's try and put this down the center. Maybe like this. And connect that up to there. So that'll give them water. That's that that's a bit weird. That's done in a very bad way. <laughs> Why is that bit there? Can I not destroy that? Destroy that building. And then redo that from there to there to there to there. Why was there a jiggity jaggedy bit? What was I thinking with that? I've no idea. So that will get them water. I know they are building the pipe, look. They're doing the pipeline. Are they dropping this off as well? Are they building the thing? No. 
Six concrete, two machine parts. Have I got enough machine parts? Yes, I've got ten machine parts. Okay, so that's good. That's a good thing. So that'll be a nice source of water. That'll be splendid. As well as this thing, which is presumably at the minute powering our fuel generator, uh, that will generate some nice, lovely, clean, proper water. Well, is it clean if it's been on under Martian ground? I don't know, but whatever. Some water of some description, which is fine by me. That's absolutely fine. Okay, let's extend this thing out like that as well. Now, they can overlap, I believe. Yes, because the uh, electric power line things can go underneath the pipes because they're two sort of different things, which is fine. So in here, we're going to have all our electric generating kind of stuff, which is fine. And then up here, maybe we can have all the livable stuff. Right, what about the sectors to scan? Uh, yes, we're doing this sector here. Then the sector right above us, which is good, because we could put some more domes in there. Maybe put another dome over here, perhaps. Get some more domes over this side as well. We need one here to make use of this resource here. So yeah, there's plenty going on. Now we do have, we've got an orbital probe, which immediately scans an area for deposits and anomalies. So uh, deep scanning of the sector is not possible with current technology. Yeah, so you can unlock a tech which lets you deep scan, which lets you find even more secret things, which is very good. So I might wait. I might wait until I've got the right tech to do that. Okay, so now all we need to do now is get some oxygen generation going on because nobody can breathe. <laughs> There's no oxygen being generated. So for those, you need to build moxies. However, we also want to build water towers. There's quite a lot to do. There's a lot to do. And our water towers are going to be actually very important. Let's see if I can get a water tower. I don't know if water towers need to be actually powered. I don't think water towers need electricity. I'm fairly certain they don't need actual power. It's just a great big, I don't know, a great big bucket, I suppose, <laughs> that just sits there. So if we put that there, a water tower, just on the edge of this thing here, it doesn't really particularly matter where it goes. One water tower should be fine. That's okay. I think we're happy with that. And then we want to build ourselves a moxie. I don't understand what that what that stands for. Mock oxygen e. I don't know what a moxie stands for. I, uh, it generates oxygen, but I don't know what why it's called a moxie. Something to do with oxygen, i.e. my oxygen internet explorer. I don't know. But we want one of those as well. Uh, well, uh, ideally, we probably want more. We want more than one of those. But the minute, let's just have one. So we can also put that just here. If we flip that round, look, it's linked to the pipes, which is jolly exciting. In fact, if we put it like that, I think we can link it in with those pipes quite well. And it can sit next to the water thing, which is good, like that. And I think when they build it, it'll connect to the pipes. If not, we can just drop a pipe in. That is absolutely fine also. And then we want uh, an oxygen tank just to sit and just store some oxygen as well. So I think, can we drop that? Uh, that's blocking objects. That's annoying, isn't it? Because uh, it's underneath the pipes. Grr. Uh, let's just put that right next to the moxie thing. So it can just sit like that. That's absolutely fine. And they can get on with that. And then we'll see whether we need to do pipes and stuff. So at the minute, there's not much left for us to do. We're sort of sat here not really doing much. This thing is 50% pretty much waiting to refuel. So I think what we do is... We just speed time on. In fact, this thing here is producing an awful lot of concrete. 110 concrete in there, plus 30. So we've got 140 concrete. And they are loading some into there. Okay, right, so we'll leave that going for now. I was going to say, we could turn the power off. Do you know what as well? While we're here, I want another battery, think about it. Another power accumulator is always a good thing. So let's have another battery also sitting in here. Uh, let's pop that, what, there? We can have all sort of battery storage in these little things along here. And the rest of the power generating things can go along there is my idea. So yeah, let's just pop that into the grid just there. That'll do. And it's autom it'll automatically connect. It's next to the power cables. So yes, it's all looking very, very cool. It looks very, very exciting. I like this. I like this a lot. Okay, so there's no anomalies for us to go and investigate, I don't believe. Nope, there's nothing for us to do except sit and wait. So yeah, we'll sit and wait until something happens and they finish the dome. I think the dome is their priority. So we'll come back when the dome is done. Ah, now, excitingly, our research is complete. Mars crowdfunding is complete. So now we've got 5.2 million. So I think we get 200 million each time we research a thing, which is actually quite good because the amount of things there are along here, look at the amount of techs there are. So we're going to get an awful lot of research, uh, awful lot of money, sorry, from the research that we do and that's quite good that's very very good what's the um what's the next thing it's unlocked uh productivity training engineers and geologists have plus 10 performance when working in their specialty okay 
And the same one there is for scientists and botanists. Now, I do want quite a lot of scientists. So I think what we're going to do is, after we've researched the apartments and the decommission protocol thing and the farms, I think we'll boost this. I think we'll get the systematic training in to upgrade the performance of the scientists because I want more science. Because science is good, so we can unlock all these exciting new funky things. There's actually quite a lot to unlock. There's an awful lot of things. But also, it gives us monies, and monies is useful. But right, okay, so that's that sorted. They've not done too much on that, so uh, let's go back to waiting. Oh, there was a thing. There was a thing. A thing just crashed. Something just crashed. Like an asteroid or a meteor or something just kind of came in and crashed down here. Did that cause us any damage? I don't think it causes any damage. Did it land? Was that it or something? Yeah, that might have been it, look. That might have been what just landed. A heap of rock. We just got nearly got by... By a meteor. I assume that's a meteor. Oh, and it's going... What's going on? Oh, it's just got to night time. I thought it was going weird. I thought there was some sort of storm coming or something that I didn't know how to deal with. But uh, no, no. Okay, right. It, it, it's all good. It's all fine. It's all fine. Um, just in that intervening period, I did do some maintenance on these because they were getting quite covered in dust. They weren't really doing much. They weren't really generating much dust. So I've gone through and done some maintenance on things. But yep, yeah, they're still concentrating on the dome. But look, in fact, the water thing is done. Oh, this is very exciting. So currently, that is on. Now, it's not doing anything. So not producing due to lack of demand. Ah, that's very clever. So it's not actually doing anything because it's not needed at the minute. So I think if we had a water tower, in fact, if we up the priority of that, because you can up the priority of things, if we tell them to build that, it'll start filling up the water tower. Well, if we could build the water tower first, it will then start building, uh, filling up that water tower. Oh, Okay, that's probably a bad thing, isn't it? Being smacked in the face by meteors is a bad thing. I think that that's fair to say. Um, yeah, okay, so now the pipes are damaged. Is that damaged? I don't know if that's damaged or not. But, however, that thing is generating water and it's attached to a water tower now. So, look, it's increasing by four. So, we're going to have a big storage of water, which is always a good thing. That is always a good thing. Okay, excitingly, they are building the dome. They're actually building the dome, look. So, these bits are doors, obviously at the end of the paths where you can go in and out. So, these are little doors, and these are connectors for electricity and water and whatever else, oxygen and that kind of stuff. So, I do need to plumb this in to, uh, to actually get some power. But look, a Martian dome. It's nearly finished. It's nearly finished. Come on, there's one little robot working. Come on, get some friends in. Yes, yes, and boom. That is beautiful so it's going on about yeah domes without oxygen and domes without this and domes without that it's having a little bit of a meltdown so this dome is currently not powered and it's not got any oxygen but that's fine there is no one living in it milestone achieved construct a dome and now we are low on on polymers so we need some polymers can our ship take off yet uh, oh nearly it's so nearly to taking off so what we do is when this ship takes off and is heading one way we will then send the other ship to us, loaded with polymers, which is a good thing. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, they'll pass. Maybe they'll pass like ships in the night. Okay, so the MOXIE is built. So the oxygen generator thing is built. But it doesn't quite fit the pipe system yet. So yes, we're going to have to build pipes like that. And then you can connect to say there and there and there. And that's probably a bit excessive as far as pipes go. But pipes can break. So I suppose having more pipes is good. Now, one thing I do like, one thing I really like about this is it takes into account Mars. The fact that Mars is dusty, sort of dusty stuff. Look, these pipes here, dust on them. It's brilliant. It's really cool. I mean, that thing, oh, actually, that does need a bit of maintenance. Look at it. Oh, yeah, that definitely needs some maintenance. Yes, request maintenance of that, please. So, yeah, look, they, they get covered in dust, which I think is really, really cool. I like that. Uh, okay, right, so that thing has got oxygen. The dome has got oxygen. It needs some power. So now we can plug this into the grid. Now, if I could put them underneath that, that would be absolutely ideal because then that means that it's all sorted and very easy to follow. Right, we'll drag this down uh, like that. Drop that in there. There we go. So now that's connected. That's connected eventually with power, which is jolly exciting. So they'll drop those in. Hopefully, I'll do these bits here as well. One last little bit. Come on, drop that in. Drop it in. It's getting to night time as well. And the domes look very cool at night. So, I think that dome is ready to go. That dome is ready for us to put things in. Now, also, fortunately... Oh, right, hang on. Normal time. The spaceship can take off. So, we can send this away. We have recharged. We've fueled even the spaceship. So, now, we can launch it. There we go. 
It's got no resources on it because we took them all out and put them on here. So that's good. And we're going to send the rocket back off. Bye-bye, rocket. Bye-bye. Have a nice time. And it does proper launch sequency thing. Look, and you can tell it's heating up. We want the way, little drones. We're going to get singed. And then, yeah, away it goes. So now it's gone. So we're on our own on the planet at the minute. There's no rockets. It's just, it's just this. It's just this settlement now that we've got going on. So what we're going to do is immediately, because we've got two rockets, one of two rockets is sat on Earth in Europe somewhere. I don't know where we're based, but in Europe. So let's have another cargo rocket and prefab buildings. Right, a moisture evaporator. Normally I would order another one of those, but I don't think we need one right now because we actually have a proper water source. So I don't think we need one of those. Fuel refinery we don't need. Sterling generator, I may request another one of those because they are quite good. They're a convenient, nice, easy source of power. So we might get one of those. And then these things are all quite big. These are quite big. Now we do go through polymers quite a lot. It may be worth getting a polymer factory in. That might be quite useful. Get a polymer factory in. What else do we want to get in? So uh, we don't need food quite yet. I, mean, I might bring some food with me actually. I might bring some food. Because colonists arrive with nominal food supply. So if we can bring a tiny bit of food, that's probably a good thing. So if we bring that much food, that's useful. Polymers are going to be a problem immediately. So let's get lots of those. So 20 units of that. And yeah, I think what we'll do is, do you want to get an electronics factory or a machine parts factory? So how about, what's that? It can create electronics from rare metals. Okay, no, so we can't do that. We haven't got any rare metals just yet. So a machine parts factory might be useful. And we've still got 16,000 kilo stuff left. Uh, so we could get ourselves one of those now. We could get an RC Rover, remote controlled vehicle that transports, commands and repairs drones. We could build things further away. Or metals, I think we're okay for metals. I think we've got quite a lot of metals. Maybe we get... Uh, one of those and one of those in. Uh, an orbital pro reveals underground deposits. Yeah, so we'll get a couple of those on board. So we've got 10,000 left. What shall we go for? What shall we go for? I don't know what to do with our 10,000. Maybe just get two lots more of metals and just have them in reserve just for the sake of it. Like that. So, a sterling generator, always useful for power, machine parts, and polymer factories. We can generate stuff without having to ship it out. Uh, metal, some metals, some food, which, yeah, that should be plenty of food. And we're going to have farms and stuff. Uh, polymers, we need quite a few of those because lots of stuff is repairing. Uh, it uses polymers for maintenance. Machine parts, a few. Electronics, a few. And a couple of orbital probes just to use up the uh, just to use up the capacity. And look, it's not actually that expensive. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's not free. And it's, it's not like five dollars here or there it's what is it five hundred million dollars it's half a billion dollars or whatever it is i don't i don't know it's it's a lot of money but i think that's fine i think that's fine also no not the victor one that's a silly name we are calling it the ess catface so the european starship catface good old catface he lives on he must be around here somewhere so yeah i think that's what we do and we launch that so there's no capacity left we've got monies we launch that so yes we've got one ship going out another ship coming here which is good milestone achieved splendid so now in the domes this is this is very cool now i i, I love this this is probably my favorite bit all this is very good i like a lot of the details a lot of the work that's gone into this there's a lot of very good stuff oh look we're actually discharging power that is interesting so the batteries are actually in use right now so the power that we've stored in the batteries is being discharged so we don't generate enough power at night time with these solar panels down we don't generate enough power. That's probably because we do have quite a lot of stuff, actually. We've got a water storage thing. I don't think that uses any power, does it? That doesn't use power. No, but this thing certainly uses some power. That uses five. The Mox is going to use some. That uses two. That thing uses some. That uses another five. That uses five. So, yeah, okay. So, we might need some more power provision stuff. We've got another one of these on the way, which is useful. So, okay, right. So, power is going to be a thing. And, obviously, we are powering this gigantic dome. But... Sorry, I went on off, off on track that uh, off track, but in the dome you can put things, and it gets very cool. This is very exciting. I like this a lot. So, in the domes you can put stuff, living quarters, apartments, nursery, playground, school, and a research lab. Now we are going to have living quarters. So, 
It says, provides living space. Resting residents recover comfort faster compared to other residences. And also, we get a bonus because our mission commander, i.e. me, is a psychologist. So they also regain sanity while they are sitting in their living quarters. Now, there is apartments. So it says, provides living space for colonists. Cramped quarters grant less comfort during rest. So there's 24 people. You can fit 24 people into the apartments, whereas that can only fit 14, but they don't recover as much. So I don't think I want that. I think we're going to drop a living quarter in. And the, it, this looks tremendous. It looks so good. So you can zoom in. Now, again, mouse well broken. Let's zoom in. Look, actual sort of stuff. There's trees and stuff. So we drop it in into this. I don't know what that is. I don't know what a six of the circle is called. But whatever. Sector. And when it's built, you can actually zoom in and go and look around in the houses to a degree. You can have a little nosy around. It's very, very exciting. So we need that in. They need somewhere to live. And there's a lot of other stuff as well. So there's dome services. So this is like the basics. This is your research lab and then your school for your children and your nursery and your playgrounds and that kind of stuff. Then dome services has stuff like a bar. So a space bar, which I do quite like. A diner, space diner, space hospital, space gym, space gambling, space cops, space vegetables, uh, space art, and an electronic shop, which is fascinating. By the latest and greatest gadgets Mars has to offer. Which is a bit weird, because you think, really? What gadgets are available on Mars? This are the ones I send there. Uh, there are dome spires, which are the things, if I just put it over there, that sit in the middle and look absolutely flipping amazing. So that one that we've got on there is the sanatorium. So it treats colonists for flaws through advanced, mostly humane, medical practices. And we get that through virtue of being a psychiatrist, which is good. And there's also the nice stuff as well. There's decorations, there's little lamps and... Uh, gardens and alleyways and stone gardens and lakes and a, you can put a statue on and all this kind of stuff if you've got a gap because sometimes depending on what things you pick to put into these squares you might find a gap you might find that you've got a gap in the corner so you could put a little pond or something in and it makes it all look very lovely for the people that are going to live on mars and it's all very nice so what we plan to do now is i think we're going to have to wait we're going to have to sit and wait now we do have some fuel that's a good thing we've got some fuel going on which is nice, splendid, fuel is useful. So what we need to do is wait, I think, for a bit. Have we got, how much is it going to take to build some solar panels? So if we can recharge both those batteries during the day, that's going to be useful. Uh, wind turbine will go at night, so it costs four machine parts. Uh, no, it costs four, no, four concrete and one machine part. Okay, so we could build maybe a couple more of those if we fit them together. Yeah, I think we do that. And then also, can we afford to build two large solar panels? Four metal... Oh, yes, we can absolutely easily afford that. So flip that round. Okay, so we've got more power coming in. So we can charge these up. So overnight, we might not be quite so low on power. This thing is going to generate electricity anyway. We've got another one of those on the way. So I think our power issue should be sorted out. Nothing else looks like it's in urgent need of maintenance. Oh, that kind of needs maintenance. <laughs> Look at it. It's going Martian red. Oh, yeah, look there. Yeah, that does need some maintenance. Okay, so sort that out. Okay, so while... Oh, look, hang on here. Right, these things are done now. The apartments are finished. And yes, look, if we go into the dome bubble, you can go and have a look. Right, kind of not right in, but you can see that there's... Uh, there's little sort of lounger bed things there. Sort of things for outside. There's beds there. There's a pillow. And then up here, stools. Stools for them to sit on. Uh, controls not working well. A double bed. They've got, if I can come around this way, that's a problem with pivoting on a point, I suppose, uh, and try and zoom in with a broken scroll wheel. You've got a telly with like speaker bar things and drawers, and there's a little area to eat. And stuff. It's very cool. There's a lot of detail gone in. There's a kitchen area down there. Look, you like some sort of oven top, maybe somewhere to do your dishes or whatever. So yeah, there's a lot There's a lot of detail. Each building has this kind of level of detail. Now, I've not built that many buildings in these things. But the ones I have built, I've been very impressed with. So, let's build something else in here. Let's build some more Mars things. So, a nursery, living space for children, playground is children, school is children. So these two things to do with children. We're not going to have children immediately. However, a research lab is something that I want. And they also look very, very cool. <laughs> So let's put it here, actually. Let's put it there. And that means that that bit of the research lab, the sort of the C3 bit, can be poking out to the middle. It looks very awesome. So yeah, so we'll have a research lab. Because I want to get more research because it gives us more monies. 
And then let's put a dome services thing over here. So what do we want? What do we want them to have? A diner or possibly, well, what about grocer? Distributes hot meals and fresh produce. That sounds like a good thing to me. Food and shopping is good, particularly if we're going to have farms in there, which actually, where are farms? Ah, maybe we haven't researched it yet, in fact, thinking about it. Have we researched farms yet? Uh, no, but we nearly have. Okay, well, let's hurry time on a little bit. But yeah, let's get a grocer in. I think he's probably... Yeah, that's a wise choice. He. How very, how very stereotypical of me. They, I should say, are a very good idea. So let's get a, a, a grocer in. Pop a grocer just there. But it might be, depending on what size the other building is, the farm. I imagine the farm might take up a whole one of those. We'll have room for a building here. And there'll be a little space in the middle where we could put something like a fountain or a, or a pond or something nice. Right. So now we can do soil adaptation. So we should get a farm. Is that in decorations is that in education research dome services whereabouts does that fit then where is a farm hang on let me go and find where it might be is it in a life support ah right there you go a hydroponic farm oh right right slow slow time hang on hang on hang on slow time down slow 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 there are different types of farms okay hydroponic farm produces food consumes water depending on crop type so it costs four metal and two polymers. And uh, then we've got maintenance of one metal and three workers. And the base production is based on the crop. Whereas that farm produces food, consumes water depending on the crop type. So that doesn't cost anything. That doesn't cost anything. There are more workers. It doesn't cost polymers and stuff to build. So why do you want that? Is that massive? Ah, right. It's a whole thing. It takes up a whole sector of the this here. Joe, you know what? I'm going to put one of them in. Because I want to see what one looks like. So let's... When the when the people eventually get here... When we get to be prepared... Oh, right. Cable fault. So now our cable is broken. We have a malfunctioning cable just here. So we can click this and it tells us that it's broken. It's malfunctioned. It's now leaking. So we can tell the drones to go and fix it. Now, which one of you drones is going to be the hero and go and fix this thing? Go on. Go and fix that. Go and be the, go and be the gosh darn it hero. Go and save everybody. Now, if I could loop that round, that might make it a bit more secure, so electricity could still get to where it needs to go. Now, yeah, at the minute, yeah, look, the solar panels are down. That wouldn't have had any power, I don't think. So, yeah, there we go. It's still being... Is that still broken? Did he not mend the cable fault? Could you maybe mend the cable fault, please? Because that's probably a bad, that's really bad, I would say. In fact, yeah, this thing isn't going to have any electricity. Is it going to have electricity? Oh, are they connected through there? Why is that still working then? I'm a bit confused to why these still have power. Because so I would have thought if the cable fault's there, they're not able to get power from the batteries or the solar panel, uh, the, the wind turbines. The solar panels are down. So where are they getting their power from? How intriguing. I do not know. Right, go and fix the cable fault with your buddy. Go on. Both of you get on that, please. That'd be good if you could both work on it. it takes a long time to fix a cable fault. Ooh, there's an anomaly just there. You... Go and research anomaly. They look funny when they're <laughs> it's at, um, at multiple speed because it looks a little bit weird with them sort of zooming about quite quickly. Okay, right. So that's now just saying, I need some people. Hello, you appear to have forgotten to put humans in here, but that's absolutely fine. We know that. So how's the farm? The farm is built. Oh, the farm is complete. So that's it. So the farm is just going to sit in there and then they'll put the goods onto these, uh, these pallet areas. Okay, I think that's it for... Let's build another thing. Let's build another fun thing in the in the domes. I don't know what I need, but I just want to build some more stuff. So they've got a grocer. They've got somewhere to live. They've got a science thing to work. They've got a farm for food. How about somewhere fun? How about the space bar? R&R &R and fancy cocktails. Uh, oh, what was that? New techs. Oh, splendid. That's good. What buildings aren't working? A building's not working? Oh, maybe that's because of the fault we had. So, um, yeah, let's go for a space bar. So R&R &R and fancy cocktails, services, relaxation, drinking and social. That's got to be a good thing. Oh, it's quite big, but it looks pretty flipping amazing. Yeah, let's have one of those in. Let's have some relaxed people here. And what's this? The ESS Catface is ready to land. So let's put the ESS Catface back here where the other one landed. Why the heck not? Might as well drop that down. And it's going to come in and land. And then they'll hopefully unload it all. They'll unload all the stuff, which is good. Yep, so that drops down. 
the little bots are going to come along. They'll unload all the stuff because we've got sort of generic kind of bay things, which is fine. Do you know what we could do is putting one of those up here, thinking about it. Storage. Universal storage. Let's just drop one of those kind of in there. Let's drop one in the middle. Uh, maybe not near the thing. Let's drop one just there. Uh, okay. So that's, that's a new text. Oh, okay, right. New techs available for research. There's more to the barren environs of the red planet than meets the eye. A veritable treasure trove of undiscovered knowledge and wonder, so long as you know where to look. Even the tiniest, simple-looking rock can contain the answers to mysteries which perplex the human mind for generations. Did we not see this before? I think we saw that, that wording before. Maybe it was another playthrough, but anyway, whatever. We have uh, the following texts have been revealed. Adapted probes and the Earth-Mars Initiative. Okay, what are they? What's that? Hydroscopic. Where's the Mars thing initiative? Earth Mars initiative increases research provided by sponsor by a hundred, whatever that is, research points or whatever. That seems quite good. I quite like the idea of that. And what's that one? Adapted probes. Probes are cheaper and can deep scan. Hurrah! That's precisely what we want. We want those. So before we start using our probes, we might as well make sure that they're the best they can be and then deep scan with them. Okay, that's very exciting. Okay, and look how much stuff there is. There's so much more. There's so much more stuff. Okay, and that's fine. And then, um, yeah, we'll do maybe that fourth. Do you know what? Let's take that out. Can we undo that one? I'm not so bothered about that now. I'd rather get these things in. I'd rather get these things in. Do you know what? Let's take that out and then put that as third. So we'll get the decommission protocol just to get it out of the way. And what are these other things? Rocket cargo space is increased by 10,000 kilograms. That's useful. Moisture evaporator upgrade. Water production is increased by 50%. Yes, please. We shall have a slice of that pie as well. Okay. And then we maybe will get the, the training thing in fifth place. <laughs> but yeah, I want to get that done. So the Mars... Earth Initiative, the Earth Mars Initiative, to get the research provided by the sponsors. Then I might do a sponsor thing to get some more research out of it. Okay, okay, that's very cool. So now, now all this is happening, we need some people because we have no people. Building's not working. Uh, oh no, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it is working. I'm sure it's all fine and it's all cool. So let's just check water requirements. So we're generating uh, water grid hourly production two, total demand two. And we've got a load of stored water. But this thing can produce four. So that thing isn't even pushing it. That thing is working at one out of four production. So that's fine. The water storage thing is full. Oxygen wise, we are producing two and demanding one to go in the dome. Plus, we've got some stored. We've got 70 oxygen stored. So if something does happen, that's fine. Electricity. No, that's water. Let's go down to the electricity ones. Electricity, we are producing 55.4. And we are demanding 41. And that's in the day. Now, we do have another one of those little generator things, don't we? Sterling generator. So let's just drop one of those just there. Might as well get that prefab thing down. So what I think we do now is, I think we go and get ourselves some actual people to come and live in the dome. So we do that from here. So we can select our rocket. Now, we sent one back, if you recall. We refueled it and sent it home. So we've got the rocket back on Earth. So we can now choose to do a passenger rocket. So we've got, what's that? 91 colonists that match our sort of set thing. So we can go in and tinker with all this, if you like. So you can go into age group and say, I don't want children. No, I don't want old people. <laughs> no, but I will have youths, some youths, mostly adults, and then they're sort of smattering of middle-aged folk who are sort of at the end of their sort of working lives. But that's fine. I quite like the idea of that. So yeah, I'll go for that. That's fine. And we've obviously got you, so we're going to need to put a school in at some point. Specialisation. So we can say, I only want scientists, or I only want geologists, or whatever. But that's a little bit silly. We're not going to do that. So we'll just allow them to pick whatever. I'm, I'm quite happy with that mix. With a couple of medics, some botanists, some geologists, security people, whatever. So I'm quite happy with them picking whatever they want for that. Male, female, I'm not bothered, whatever. Male, female, other, yep, yeah, jolly good. I'll have whatever mix you give me there. Right, now here we go. Here's the stuff where we need to kind of think about it. So perks. So there's all these different perks. So workaholics sounds like a good perk, but uh, they lack relaxation, so I suppose they get stressed out a bit. And then you've got, <laughs> I mean, sexy people give a greatly increased birth rate, right? Celebrities, there's no celebrities for us to choose from. Saints, there's religious people, there's gamers, there's nerds, which is jolly exciting. So they gain a temporary morale boost every time a new technology is researched. And, you know, down to there's rugged and fit people and hippies. What do hippies get? Gain twice as much comfort in gardens and parks. Well, of course they do. 
So yeah, all these things, I'm just going to leave them for our first, for our first lot of people. I'm just going to leave them. In fact, I would quite like a genius. Can we have a genius, please? That'd be quite cool because they generate more research when in the colony. So that's a good thing. Everything else, though, I'm just going to leave it as is. So that's perks. Flaws. Now, obviously, perks are good things. Flaws are bad things. So <laughs> idiots. We don't want idiots. We don't want people with chronic conditions. Uh, alcoholics, possibly could cure those because our sanatorium thing can cure these. Hypochondriacs. I would rather not have hypochondriacs if at all possible. However, that reduces our colonists down to 80 people, which is not ideal. Uh, okay, let's go back from the flaws. So there's not that many of those. There's not as many of those. And then quirks are just things like this. So you can just be a guru, a tourist, which is a bit stupid. Doesn't work. I don't want tourists, thank you very much. Or vegans. <laughs> don't worry, they'll tell you. Okay, or a guru. What's that do? Randomly spreads other traits of this colonist to persons in the same dome with less than three traits. Oh, okay. But the only thing I don't want is tourists at the minute. Okay, so I think that sort of sorted that out. I think we can now launch that. And yeah, we've got 12 people. So well, there's 80 colonists that match that specification. It's then going to pick 12 colonists. So if we review that, we're going to get ourselves... These are the... 12? Oh no, these are all of them. These are all the people. Now, I don't know if you can choose the colonists you want. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure that we can pick those. Okay. Maybe we do want to pick some specialisations then. Maybe we say we'll have some scientists. Uh, what do engineers do? An engineer trained to work in factories. Security. Geologists might be good. You might be useful. And botanists for farms. Yes, we'll certainly have some botanists for farms. Okay, so I think that's good. And now let's just launch that. Let's just launch the Penge 1, but the Penge 1 is now carrying people rather than actual goods, which is jolly exciting. So we're going to launch that. That is now going to take off. Yeah, buildings not working is because there's nobody in them. These buildings require human beings to make them work. There's nobody in them, so they're not working. So now, nothing to do really, but wait for the ships to arrive. So if we just speed time on, how long is it going to take? So they're on, what, 5%. So it might take a little while. It might take a couple of days for the ship to arrive with the first people on. But until then, we can just sort of sit and wait. Let's go and check what sectors we're going to scan. Uh, where do we want to scan next? Let's go across the bottom of where we are now. Let's go across this area here. That's kind of ready to be flat and buildable on in sector 2 down there. 3 maybe around there. 4 maybe around the bottom. Uh-oh, cable fault, cable fault. Whereabouts? Whereabouts is the cable fault? Oh, they're working on it. I think they're working on the cable fault. Oh, no, they're not. It's just sparking wildly. Okay. Drone. Little drone fellas. Is there anyone not doing anything? You. You. No, no, no. Come. Oi. You, Sonny. Get here. You cheeky thing. You, come this way. Go and do some repairing of, of, of cables, please. And what I might do is, while I'm here then, let's do this. So let's make that follow underneath the pipes. And if we reconnect, if we connect that up there like that, it means there's a loop. So if the cable breaks here, it can still all work because the electricity cables are in a big round loop, which is splendid. Right, okay, yep, some buildings won't be working because there's no power to them. That's absolutely fine. So yeah, let's just speed time on now until people actually arrive because we've got nothing left to do. The, the oxygen's working, the water's filling up the water tanks. We've got fuel, we've got plenty of fuel. The ship is already half full, ready to return this ship. So, uh, yeah, I think we just wait until the people, the actual first Martian colonists, arrive. And it is ready. Our founding colonists are ready. So, we can drop this wherever. But they're going to go to this dome. So, why don't we be a little bit kind to them and drop the spaceship relatively nearby? Now, I don't want to put it in the way of this deposit thing here. Because that might be one of the things we get them to do. Go and do some mining of that deposit. So, let's put them, let's put it just sort of there. That looks like a pretty good place. And this is obviously going to take off again at some point. So if we drop that down, we get the funky landing light sort of sequency thing happening. Let's just hurry it on a little tiny bit. It's going to come down any second. Any second. It's taking a long time for this one to land. Maybe the people are a bit scared. <gasps> There we go. So uh, there is a man reading this, but I'll read over it. Full of hope and determination, the first founders have set foot on the red planet. The next ten souls, so days, will be full of difficulties and dangers, but also with great promises and opportunities. It is now to us to prove that Mars can be a doorway to greater riches and the future of the human civilization. Even the most epic adventures begin 
with a single step. And there is the footprint of the single step. Effect. Arrival of additional colonists temporarily suspended until the colony provides a prove, sorry, able to sustain human life. Your founder colonists must survive for 10 souls before additional people can arrive. So, we can only have, uh, this is it now, for 10 days. We have to keep these people alive for 10 days. And the colony will be evaluated positive before the period ends in the event the first human is born on Mars. If you feel you are up to the challenge, try constructing a medical building and raising the comfort level of founders as much as possible with service buildings. So a medical building, we could build a medical building. Why not? Now, excitingly, who's the first one to step onto Mars? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Click on you. Who's the... F there, we've stepped on Mars. Gaston, Gaston Claude, the first man to step on the surface of Mars. Did you say anything? You look like you're in a bit of a rush. You could have said something poetic, but no, you just jumped off the thing and now you're sort of, now you're just legging it into the dome. But this is very exciting. Oh, the farm's working. The farm is actually functioning up there. And let's watch Gaston go into the doors. Yeah, in you go, Gaston. And Gaston is just there. The people are in the domes. They're here. Oh, it's very exciting. So there we go. So they're going to settle into their houses. A little sort of, a, not apartments. Oh, they're sort of, uh, they're nice. They're not apartment blocks like the cramped ones. These are the good ones. There's the grocer. So I imagine they sort themselves out with jobs. I'm going to guess. I don't know, actually. I don't know if they do. And then there's a, there's this research centre. And there's the farm. That's very cool. What does a farm grow at the minute? Wheat. 4% growing wheat. That's quite nice. So they're just going into the house at the minute. I imagine they're just going in and getting used to what they've got to do. And, you know, they're sitting down. Oh, look, they're, they're asleep. He's already come in. I suppose they have just travelled from Earth to Mars. I think I might let him have a nap for a little while. Not too long, however you are. Can we click on you? Can we find out who you are, Mr. Mr. Lazy? No, it doesn't seem we can find out who you are when you're in the house. Never mind. But yeah, look, there's all these people here. And then, uh, yeah, there's room for two more as well. But we can't do any of that for the next ten days. So on day... What was it? So on day 24... We will be allowed to bring more people in. But our current job now is keep these guys alive. So now all this stuff becomes important because there's actually human beings involved. All the oxygen generation and water generation, all that kind of stuff now matters a little bit. Water, not so bothered. Electric, more bothered. So power, I'm more bothered. Ooh, particularly when the things are very dirty. Let's request maintenance. Got all the solar panels and all of the wind turbines. And all of those, in fact, ma maintain all of those things. Maintain everything. Because that's probably a good thing. So there we go. So the people are in. But yes, I think that is it for now. I've just noticed. Oh, we've got a milestone. That's nice. Uh, the person has appeared just here. Agna Walter has a little profile sort of picture down here. A trained geologist securing vital resources for the colony. She's the genius. Now, why have I got her as a, as a specific button down here? Why is she special? Is it because she's a genius? I don't know. I don't know. How a trait she is a founder, which is jolly exciting. Okay, so yeah, we'll leave it. We'll come back next time and we shall carry on. This rocket will be able to take off, bring back some more stuff. We've also got to place down our polymer factory and our machine parts factory, I think it was. Put them somewhere as well. Get people to work in those. Generate more polymers because we are going to burn through polymers quite quickly, I think. Maybe on the next rocket, send up another fuel depot thing, fuel refinery because we're going to need that if we're making our own polymers, because we want fuel to replenish the ship's fuel, send them back home, and uh, fuel to then generate our own polymers and whatever else they're needed for. So, um, yeah, we might need some more stuff from Earth. We need to send one of these away first, so that's nearly ready to go. And then, yeah, we'll see if we can keep these guys alive. And it's all jolly exciting. It looks tremendous. Just look, look at the dome. Look, at, look how good it looks. We can go inside the dome and see it. I just like the fact that you can pop in. And it sort of changes. You're no longer looking through the glass thing. You're looking through actual stuff. And it's where the people are. And he's going to work. And he's doing some groceries. And you're going to do some science stuff. And you're going to do farming. It's all jolly exciting. So yes. If you are enjoying this. Please do leave a like. And also please do subscribe. To keep up to date with this series. And all of the other stuff that we do as well. But for now. Thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard. And I will see you next time. How are we doing? You've just circumvented the queue. You, sir, a cheat. Oh my goodness me, there's 12 million people that just come in from an airplane. Are you a skeleton? Are you just Skeletor? Is that all it is? You, madam. You are a pain. You are a scourge upon this earth. People are urinating on the floor.